Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'd like to direct this message to new born-again Christians. Uh, first of all, I want to say I love you very much. And I'm so thrilled that you have discovered how much Jesus Christ loves you. And you've discovered that Jesus has been involved in your life ever since the beginning, and I'm so just really happy that you found so much peace and so much joy in Jesus Christ. And I'm happy to call you my brother in Christ, no matter who you are. Um, oftentimes, newborn again Christians, they throw out the baby with the bathwater. And that's not a nice thing to do to babies. Um, what I'm trying to say is, um, you've discovered that your lifestyle choices before you you found Jesus Christ, brought so much misery to your life. Um, the lifestyle choices that you had, had made um, brought so much pain to your life, whether it was like sleeping around, um, getting involved in lots of drugs and alcohol, or just being involved in a lot of destructive relationships, whether it was you were the abuser, or you were, being, you were the one that was abused, or um, being a very manipulative relationship and stealing and all this destructive lifestyle choices you made in relationships and whatever. So, along with abandoning your lifestyle choices, you also abandoned um, your traditions, your family traditions, your religious tradition, um, your, your values, your worldview, and that's like throwing the baby out of the bathwater because a lot of the values that you had, a lot of the worldviews and political or religious traditions you had were good in themselves. So it's under, I understand about when you wanting to get rid of your lifestyle choices because like sleeping around, um, sex before marriage, and drugs and alcohol and destructive relationships and stealing and all that. Indeed, those separate you from fellowship with God and living in the Holy Spirit. And being the, these separate you from being united with God and do bring pain to your life. But a lot of your values that you had, your religious traditions, um, your political traditions, they were good in themselves. Like whether it's, a, let's say you were a Buddhist, uh, Buddhism is good in itself. Um, or you are, say you're a Muslim, like Islam is good in itself. Or even a Wicca. Um, Wicca is good in itself. And the New Age is good in itself. Very, um, even, athe like, even atheists, like... You can still live in the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and be an atheist at the same time. Like, God created a wide variety of religious traditions and political traditions because God is a very diverse person. God loves diversity. So all the religions, all the political traditions that the world has to offer, God created each of these. And each, every single religious, political tradition, ideologies and all that, each of these are good in themselves. So I understand you wanting to abandon your lifestyle choices because um, they brought a lot of pain to your life. So in an effort for you to leave behind all that pain in your life, you also abandon very good religious traditions, very good values and worldviews and stuff. But it takes discernment. It takes discernment on your part from... Knowing the difference between changing your lifestyle, but also keeping your religious heritage and also keeping your political tradition it takes discernment on your part. So, I like I understand you're eager to build a community with. That's why you get rid of all your your worldview, your values, um, and not only to leave behind all the pain that you were in with making the really awful lifestyle choices, but also to counter the struggle that you're going through with breaking with your former community. Um, you want to uh, just encourage yourself and so you just you just abandon your former community in order to build um, your new community in order to build yourself up and to be a new person. You, you're making an effort to be a new person and to not make the same lifestyle choices so um, that's why you just get rid of all your religious tradition and political heritage and all that but you do not need to need to do that I mean um, it takes greater bravery to be your own person um, there is a certain level of being brave and courageous with radical conversion 
But it's even more, it takes even more courage, it, it takes even being even more of a brave person with being your own person and maintaining your values, maintaining your religious traditions that you had, maintaining your worldview, and maintaining the community that you came out of, while also changing your lifestyle, not being the same person that you were, but living the Holy Spirit um, in your, in the values, worldview, traditions, and her heritage that you grew up with. Because the Holy Spirit can be lived and found in every single religious tradition the world has to offer. Every single political, not just religion, but also political. Because I'm an anarcho-socialist. I'm an anarchist. And you can still be a socialist, still be an anarchist, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Still be a Marxist, and still be filled with the Holy Spirit. Obviously. And even still be, like I said, even still be an atheist. You can still be an atheist still be an agnostic, and still be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is found in every single tradition and heritage that God created. So, and you're living in the Holy Spirit, builds you up, and enables you to not make the same lifestyle choices that you had before. I often, I think that oftentimes, evangelical Christians, they are afraid of um, universalism. Because they don't want to be showed up, shown up by other religions with being more, with not being as moral people as like a Muslim or Buddhist. Like, evangelical Christians, they're afraid of a Muslim or Buddhist or even an atheist being a more moral person than they are. They are afraid of an atheist, Muslim, or Buddhist, or whoever, showing more sexual purity than they are, with showing, being proactive in acts of love towards other people um, more than they are. So evangelical Christians are afraid of universalism because they don't want to be shown up with their morality. Because evangelical Christians are not moral people, in my opinion. So, anyway, the middle way is the bravest way. Maintaining your religious tradition, traditions and maintaining your values and a worldview while being filled with the Holy Spirit and enjoying your relationship with Jesus Christ, enjoying knowing the love that Jesus Christ has for you, enjoying that peace and joy in the Holy Spirit as you, you unite yourself to Jesus Christ in your values, in your worldview, and in your tradition that you, you, you were in, that you had abandoned. So, that's all I wanted to say, and I love you very much. Bye.